What is up, everybody? I am Is Nefarious, and we are finally back to a series that is has long awaited a a prequel, uh, well, a sequel or a comeback. Um, we're gonna bring back Saints Row, and I haven't done one of these since like week. I would say like week 11 or 12 of season 1. We are completely done with season 2. As you can see, we are in a divisional round of the uh, PML playoffs. Unfortunately, our Saints did not make it once again uh, last season. Um, if you're not aware, we finished 8-8 eight and eight with the New Orleans Saints. And then this season, we went 6-10. and 10. So, I mean, I'm not the great, greatest user, but... In different leagues, I, I have a lot more success than I do in PML. PML, uh, you pretty much got to be on the top of your game every game you play. It's a very, very competitive league. Uh, very sim very simulation style league. I mean, anybody could be anybody any week. And also, you know, one mistake and you're, you're, you're done. It's You got no shot after that. Um, but like I said, 8-8. Eight and eight, uh, season one, season two, six and ten. Um, I have been playing a lot more Madden recently, uh, joining a couple other leagues uh, just for practice, uh, performing really well in the other leagues, getting a little confidence, and also growing more familiar with my game plans and my plays that I want to call. So hopefully season three will be much different um, as as I grow uh as a better user in Madden. Um, but now into Saints Row. Uh, the basis of this was to talk about, you know, my content and also follow the story of the Saints, but also follow the story of Kyle Allen. Uh, Kyle Allen is going to be the uh, heir apparent to the now quarterback, Drew Brees. And as you can see here, Kyle Allen started off as a 52 overall, as a, a base overall in Madden 20. I now have him up to a 71. And this is basically through content, uh, a tribute request um, that you are allowed to have in Premier Madden. Uh, as long as you put out content, you could sub submit a uh, request for tributes like awareness, uh, short accuracy, deep accuracy, all that. The only thing you can't really submit for is speed, acceleration, agility, strength, um, throw power, anything that has to do with physical attributes uh, you can't request for, but I'm able to request for everything else. And like I said, he started off as a 52 at the age of 23. Now at the age of 25, he's a 71 overall, and he's only played, uh, I would say, a handful of games if that so this is all based on request and content so i mean if i played with him throughout two seasons he would probably be even higher maybe a high uh close to 80 uh high 70 like a 78 77 something around there um but through focus training and, uh, and requests 71 is where i have him now hopefully he's near a 75 uh before season three starts i have used uh, 17 out of the 20 um, max attribute requests we could put in for one player during the season. So he is close to his his max. He didn't really receive much as far as uh, performance-wise. Uh, we'll take a look at his stats as well. Uh, but Kyle Allen is one player that we're definitely following as the heir apparent to Drew Brees. Uh, we have nobody for the running back position. We were building uh, Vincent Smith here. As you can see, he's a 66 overall now. I kind of have fallen away from really building him. Um, feel like with D.D. Westbrook joining the team in the offseason um, on a trade with the Jacksonville Jaguars, I really don't need to build Vincent Smith, who is a little taller, but pretty much the same style player as D.D. Westbrook. I do have D.D. Westbrook signed for a few years now. I just re-signed him uh, this past season, so I don't need uh, I don't need Vincent Smith to be um, developed or you know uh, built off a tribute request. I could use that those points and that experience elsewhere. Um, 
still have Michael Thomas. Michael Thomas is wrapped up for a long time. He's not going anywhere. So, and the base basis on basic based on the uh, offense I want to run. I don't feel a need for another uh, top tail wide receiver. I think two wide receivers will do me just fine. And maybe I draft one or trade for one. I still have Traquan Smith, who seems to be a, a good piece to plug in um, here and there on certain downs and stuff like that. So it's not somebody I really need to build. So Vincent Smith is kind of on the back burner. Maybe I play him and get uh, get uh, development points through performance. Uh, but I am not going to use a tribute request on him like I was before. Uh, another guy I, I've been using heavy attribute requests on is Tabucky, uh, Tamunchin Hodges or Bucky Hodges. He is up to a 79. He was at, I believe, uh, high 60, maybe 67, 66 or something around there uh, when, the first, uh, when the base came out, the base overall. Um, I picked him up in the free agency draft when this league first started, and I've been building him ever since. As you can see, he's got great speed and acceleration. Um, I've been using the tribute points to uh, put up his uh, spectacular catch, his catch in traffic, his route running as well, and I've gotten um, I've gotten a dev story from him f through performance. So he is now a star development trait. So. It's really going to help with his growth. And he's he's been a, a big part of my offense going forward uh, next to Michael Thomas. So he's been a good uh, development. Uh, another guy I've been developing uh, since season one is Eric McCoy. Uh, a lot of focus training on him. Uh, offensive line is very scarce in this game. So I definitely wanted to make it a point to build an offensive lineman. Eric McCoy, now in his second season, he's up to a 79 overall. Uh, I believe he might have been a 70, 71 or something around there. Maybe even below 70 when we first started. Kind of like uh, Bucky Hodges. And the focus training and the attribute requests have gotten him up to 79. So I'm happy where he is. Um, this season we have Matt Womack who is uh, going to be a tribute requested f uh, going forward. He is a star development, uh, still young. Um, he's probably going to take the place of, um, well, he he did take the place of my old guard. Uh, I believe it was Warford. I got to go to the team I traded him to. All right, so yeah, Larry Warford uh, we had as a right guard. Now it's going to be a Matt Womack, uh, Matt Womack going forward and for the future. So that's why I've been building him. I traded Larry for, I believe, a fourth round pick. So uh, sold him while I can. I believe he was on a contract year and all that good stuff. So going going forward, we have Matt Womack uh, starting at right guard, and he's been being uh, he he's been uh, being built in the background through a tribute request as well as playing recently ever since the trade. Um, another thing I did this past season, I mean, I thought I would have a lot better, uh, a better season than I did. I did trade for Calais Campbell. I gave up, I believe a second round pick or was it a second? I got a double check. I gave up a third round pick for, um, Calais Campbell. So as you can see, I have that Miami pick from when I traded Larry Walford. Uh, I gave up that third round pick, so I still have my first and my second. Um, Calais Campbell didn't perform as well as I would hope he would when he first came in. Um, I didn't perform as well as I hope I would as well, um, but he didn't really help the situation at all. Um, thought he would get more sacks, but it was he's kind of he's kind of washed up at this point. Even though he has that X factor, he wasn't much of a difference. Uh, Cameron Jordan had a hell of a season. Uh, he's been performing really well. I'm hoping that development uh, regression doesn't hit him too hard, given how old he is. Uh, but his performing really, really well. I believe he was in a top 10 or top 8 in sacks. So hopefully that saves him from regressing too hard. Um, right end, I did build Trey Hendrickson a little bit. Uh, but moving forward, we are going with a different system uh, on defense. Uh, something else I want to try. So Trey Hendrickson is actually going to be walking for me. 
Um, then we got Sheldon Rankins, who also has a strong possibility of a walking as well. Um, if I'm unable to make some moves and there's nothing really in free agency, I might think about bringing him back. I might even think about bringing him back in a franchise tag uh, before free agency. Um, I haven't really fully made a decision on that, but I'm leaning to letting him walk at this moment. Um, he's been really good for me, but like I said, there's a change in scheme coming um, basically to you know counteract the division leader in the Atlanta Falcons. I have a defensive backfield. I'm trying to build something else with the front seven, so you know I'm more fit to stop um, – the Atlanta Falcons offense, um, really strong offense over offense over there, uh, really strong running game, good passing attack, um, but we we got to put something together to overthrow him and hopefully get that number uh, that division um, that division title at the end of next season. So he's most likely walking. Uh, everybody else, I believe, signed except for Quinton Jefferson. Uh, don't really need him going forward. Uh, Shane Ray and Derek Rivers. Uh, Derek Rivers, I believe, is on a contract year. I won't, I won't resign him um, through uh, the resign phase. Uh, I'll wait until free agency if nobody bids on him, and I want to bring him back. I'll bring him back then. But as of right now, you know, he's a, he's a free agent. I'm gonna let him walk, and then maybe later on I'll address him. Um, Middle linebacker Alex Anzalone is another piece I'm going to let walk. Uh, kind of feel like I'm going to kick myself in the ass after this, but he doesn't really fit what I want to do um, going forward, so I am going to let him walk. Uh, Demario Davis might be retiring. He's going into his age 33 season. Um, he's he's regressed hard since last season, and I suspect, uh, suspect him to regress even more. And Roll Thompson uh, performed pretty well. Uh, he doesn't have great speed, but he, he performed decently uh, when I was using him. Um, didn't really need his – I didn't really need crazy speed with him. The defense was just fine with uh, the 78 speed linebacker. I think – in this game, it's uh, the line. The speedy linebacker is a little less important than it was in Madden 19. Uh, I do have Joseph Jones and Peter Kal um, Kalambaya, uh, Um Not quite sure how to pronounce that, but um, I have him. He he might be a piece I want to build. Um, he is on the wrong side of 25 at this time, uh, so I don't know about getting him a dev trait and stuff like that to help me out. But maybe I build him through a tribute request. Uh, Marcus Davenport has been another guy I've built in the background. Um, he started off as a 72 overall. He is now up to 82 in a superstar development. Um, but he doesn't quite, uh, the linebacker position uh, doesn't quite um, progress the way that other positions do. Uh, maybe it's because he is a higher overall than the other positions. So it takes a little longer. Um, but I've been doing just as much a tribute request on Marcus Davenport as I do on uh, Bucky Hodges and Eric McCoy and uh, Kyle Allen. Maybe Kyle Allen, Kyle Allen gets a little more love than uh, Marcus Davenport, but he's still, um, he's still seeing the field a lot more, and he's also uh, getting those a tribute requests on the side. Um, hopefully I could get him up to a 90 at some point. Uh, he's, I'm going to continue to build him. He's still only 24. Hopefully I could get him to an X factor. That would be great. Uh, speaking of X factor, uh, uh, one guy I built from day one along with, uh, Bucky Hodges, uh, Davenport and Kyle Allen was Eli Apple. Um, uh, the X giant is now with the new Orleans saints and he's been a great tandem piece with uh, Marshawn Lattimore. As you can see, he's got that little shutdown symbol next to his name, which means he is now a X-Factor cornerback. So um, I was able to get X-Factor, uh, a dev story w against the Carolina Panthers where he got his X-Factor. So now I got Eli Apple on one side, 87 overall X factor, and then I got Marshawn Lattimore on the other side, 92 overall superstar, not X factor yet, 
Maybe we get a dev story for him this upcoming season. He's been performing really well. Uh, week 17, his first game back off injury, he had four interceptions and a touchdown return for their interception. So it was great to have him back in the lineup. Um, I think them two together are going to be a great tandem going forward. Uh, as you can see, we don't have much behind them. Uh, we got DJ Hayden, uh, Justin Hardy, uh, Kendall. Uh, Kendall Vildor, uh, which we stole off our practice squad, uh, Devontae Harris, nothing, uh, nothing to mention here, pretty much, um, our cap space didn't allow us to really put depth at certain positions, and this was one of the positions where I kind of just, you know, don't really need a depth, we'll, we'll move forward with what we got. Uh, and it it wasn't so bad. The pass defense was pretty good, so I I don't I don't have any issues with that. Um, the run defense wasn't as good, so maybe that nickel corner, um, that slot corner, we can make improvements on. Uh, taking a look at our safeties, we have Marcus Williams, who started off as an 82 or an 84, somewhere around there. He is now up to 89. We haven't been able to get superstar with him. Uh, he did have a dev story, but we missed it in season one. Uh, Eric Weddle was uh, a good plug-and-pull guy uh, this season, uh, pretty much going in when we needed uh, needed to give Marcus Williams or uh, CJ uh, CGJ a break. And CGJ is actually right here, Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. Um, I built him from day one as well. I believe he was a 70 overall or even lower than that. Uh, he is now at 82 overall, uh, really solid uh, safety for me, uh, built his zone coverage, so he, his zone coverage is all the way up to a 90, he's got 86 pursuit, got to work on that play recognition and a few other things, um, but he's he's been really well, Von Bell we signed this past offseason, but we might have a trading partner for Von Bell moving forward, uh, because CJJ, uh, CGJ is our number one starting safety, and he's going to be that guy going forward. He did fill in that cornerback when Marshawn Lattimore went down, um, but he's he's definitely going to be our starting safety going forward. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Um, a few trades since I last left off. Like I said, we, we traded Larry Walford. Uh, we also traded for uh, uh, Calais Campbell. Didn't really work out for us. Uh, we are going to have a high pick in this draft. Uh, we're going to have pick number nine as it stands now. Hopefully, it stays around there. I do want to trade up. Uh, there is a name we're very interested in. Uh, hopefully, we can trade up for him. Um, there are a few names on the trading block that we might also want to go after. Uh, one name that came up... Uh, as a possible piece is uh, Nico Collins. I mean, uh, I really like Nico Collins. I like his catching ability, especially his uh, spectacular catch. He's built kind of like, um, he's kind of built like Michael Thomas. I mean, Michael Thomas ain't as, isn't as big as him, but he's kind of built the same way. Uh, big body, wide receiver, a little slower, but could go up and catch the ball. Um, maybe I, I bring him in, but it would really have to be cheap. I don't think I'll, I'll pay a, a good price for him. Uh, that being said, if I want somebody like that, I, I'd work on Traycon Smith. And, you know, he's got a star development. And he's got good at catching ability. So maybe I work on him move, moving forward if I want to move away from D.D. Westbrook. Um but that's pretty much it when it comes to uh, people around the league. There are other people around, uh, other players around the league that I am interested in, um, but it's not. They're not really on the trading block. Uh, one name I'm extremely interested in is a uh, Bernardrick McKinney. Uh, I would love to bring him in at that middle linebacker uh, spot, taking over for Alex Anzalone. Um, I wouldn't even mind bringing in uh, Brennan Scarlett here uh, if he want uh, taking him off the uh, Houston Texans and um, plugging him at that middle linebacker spot. I want to take a look at him a little bit. Josh Jacob Martin, not so much. 
Uh, but uh, Brennan Scarlett wouldn't mind him coming over. I uh, don't really want Zach Cunningham. Uh, there was another linebacker I was interested in. Oh, Jawan Bentley I was interested in, as you can see. Uh, 76 overall, not as good as Alex Antalone, not as fast either, but he would fit more of what I'm trying to do. So those are a couple guys I'm interested in bringing in. It depends on what free agency looks like and all of that, and it depends on what's in the draft. Um, but that's pretty much where we left off. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the stats. We'll take a look at some of the stats throughout the season. So, uh, Drew Brees started most of the games, as you can see here. Um, it doesn't have his games played yet. So, yeah, he played 11 games. Kyle Allen played 7. Uh, as you can see, they both had above 60 completion percentage. Uh, Kyle Allen, that accuracy is not as good as Drew Brees. Uh, as you can see with the 16 interceptions, a lot of them were just bad throws by him. Uh, Drew Brees had a pretty decent year, 17 touchdowns to 16, in his, excuse me, 16 interceptions with 2,600 yards, um, a quarterback rating of 86.1, so it wasn't a terrible year from him. Kyle Allen, uh, like I said, 62 percentage, uh, 68.1 uh, quarterback rating, so not the greatest uh, showing from him as his, his first stint in the NFL. Hopefully next season will be a lot better with another season and another training camp under his belt. I'll probably build that throw power to be even higher. Uh, it's at its 86 now, so hopefully after uh, training camp and maybe if I get another um, a tribute role, we could have him up to an 88 throw power in that's something I can live with. I mean, Drew Brees, when I first started with him, I believe 86 was his throw power. So uh, I, wasn't, I didn't really start with somebody with a high throw power, and I'm kind of used to it now. So I'm not really too worried about it. But if I get him up to 88, that would be a really uh, good thing, especially in this Madden where the throw animation on top of the throw power, it's all, it all adds time for the defense to react and break up or intercept a pass. So... That would be a big, big thing for us. Uh, we take a look at the running backs. Alvin Kamara had a decent season, um, but not a great season compared to other running backs. I mean, Reggie Corbin uh, drastically outplayed him when it came to running the ball. Uh, as you can see, it, he had over six, uh, over 600 yards. Well, they both did, but he had um, 27 more rushing yards on... It looks like six, uh, about 60 less attempts, so uh, 59 less attempts and 27 more rushing yards. I mean, he drastically outperformed them, uh, almost doubling his uh, uh, yards per carry average. Uh, also had one more TD than Alvin Kamara, six TDs to five. He did have the three fumbles uh, and a lot less carries. So that's something we ha we would have to look at moving forward. If we want to use Reggie Corbin, uh, maybe we stick with Alvin Kamara. We throw him in a speed camp, get his speed up. Um, because everybody knows speed kills in this game. And I, I mean, people are going to say it really doesn't. But if you're not a big uh, bulky back like a Derrick Henry or a uh, Mark Ingram or uh, guys like that are big bowling balls, you are not going to really run effectively. You don't fall forward. You don't gain an uh, extra yard or two on just being a big bruising back. I mean, Latavius Murray himself also uh, gained, more, rush, gained uh, more yards per carry than Alvin Kamara. So, I mean, it's. I don't think it's me. I mean, you take a look at the products of other running backs, and Latavius Murray only has 90 speed. It's not like he's a burner as well. He's got one notch more speed than Alvin Kamara. So it's just Alvin Kamara has his his damage is through through the air. He's not a run run in between the tackles um, or handed off 10 plus times a game type of running back. We're gonna have to just find a way to get him uh, used in the passing game and then occasionally hand the ball off um, to him. Uh, maybe that's something we work on this offseason. We did re-sign him. I'm kind of kicking myself in the ass about that, um, but we will have to figure out how to include him in our offense and how to move forward with 
Alvin Kamara. Um, we also have Michael Thomas. The last season was a season to forget for him. Uh, we'll go into his career stats real quick so we can take a look at that for you. Uh, so we take a look at the career stats. Uh, last season, 2019, he had 42 receptions for 629 yards and one touchdown. As you could see, we added 25 more receptions and we also dumped more than doubled the yards and added four yards per uh per reception on and over 20 yards per game I mean over 30 yards per game on uh, with eight more touchdowns so this looks like the normal uh, Michael Thomas uh, this season uh, next season we'll, we'll continue to build on that he did come on late uh, I think it was after like six seven weeks is when I really started to get more comfortable with Michael Thomas and the way he plays and it's something moving forward where I'm I'm really excited to uh, include Michael Thomas more in the offense, and it's going to win its games, I think. Uh, his ability to uh, catch the ball in one-on-one -on -one coverage, his ability to uh, gain quick releases off the line, all that good stuff, his ability to run all kinds of different routes, it's a bunch of stuff that I think is going to help us moving forward. Uh, really excited to see how well he performs uh, moving forward, uh, season three, season four, things like that. Um, kind of upset it took me this long to, you know, grow to love Michael Thomas and uh, enjoy using him in, in my, uh, my scheme. But now that I do, hopefully everything starts to pick up. Uh, Tabucky Hodges had a really good season. After last season, he didn't really play much. He was behind Jared Cook trying to maintain that sim style play and that sim style management i had jared cook ahead of him um he didn't have i i don't think he had more than 20 catches last season i would have to take a quick look yeah he had 16 receptions for 380 yards and four touchdowns this season uh 52 receptions so he vastly outperformed himself last season 676 yards uh, the average did go go down because he's he caught the ball a lot more and also he only had the four touchdowns but that has to do with uh, Michael Thomas really coming to his own this season as well as DD Westbrook uh, coming in and performing uh, pretty decently for us uh, almost 30 catches 492 yards and four touchdowns he was with the Jaguars last year so his stats from last season were basically just with the Jaguars. He did have a better season, um, but I believe he was a, a number one there. Uh, he did have two less touchdowns, but he had 53 receptions for 627 yards. Uh, he also got injured for us. I forgot all about that. He was actually injured for quite a bit for us. I think he just came off injury this week. Um, he might have got injured in like week 13 or 14, so he missed three maybe four games so that's actually a, a, a pretty decent stat line he probably would have matched his numbers from uh, his days with the Jacksonville Jaguars in PML um, he did outperform when it came to the touchdowns so that's that's something to build on as well as Tracon Smith uh, 10 receptions 126 yards in the touchdown um, and then we had Vincent Smith 13 receptions 99 yards in a touchdown uh, a lot of guys here that really don't get into the offense much. Uh, as you can see, uh, we got a couple no names at tight end uh, getting some receptions. Hopefully, uh, we could bring in another tight end possibly through free agency. We'll have to look at uh, what's out there. Um, another thing I wanted to talk about was Alvin Kamara. Uh, like I said, he's not going to do damage in the running game, but in the passing game, he performs. Performed really well, 60 receptions as a running back, 495 yards, and three receiving touchdowns. He's He doesn't have that big play um, ability yet in this offense. Uh, maybe going forward, that's uh, something we could build on. Um, but he's he's been reliable uh, with the 60 catches. Uh, doesn't have their drops. I wish they, they had their drops so we could take a look at that as well. Um, but 60 catches is really good. Uh, almost 10 yards per catch and the three touchdowns. So he's somebody you have to watch for in the passing game. Um, it's something I, I, I think I uh, 
performed at least decently with Alvin Kamara. Uh, may not been able to run the ball, but at least I could throw him the ball and uh, get him open in situations. Uh, taking a look at our offensive line, uh, Ryan, um, I'm so actually surprised. Actually, I'm not surprised. He, he's he got to beat a lot throughout the season. Uh, towards the end of the season, it got a lot better. Uh, maybe it was just me performing better as a user. Uh, but at the beginning of the season, it felt like he would get beat every single play. Um, Eric McCoy, seven sacks, uh, not too bad. Uh, Jake Hansen, the rookie, uh, performed pretty well, only six sacks. Matt Womack on 10 games only gave up four sacks. So you think six more games, maybe he's around nine sacks. If, no, that's that's not right. Maybe he's around seven sacks, like Eric McCoy, in six more games. Um, decent, decent little performance from him. John Sullivan didn't really play much. Uh, played for five games before I moved on to Matt Womack. Um, we take a look at the, the defense. Alex Anzalone uh, had 80 tackles. Uh, tackles for loss, he also led. Um, I believe I, I was using him a lot. Uh, Marcus Davenport had 10 tackles for loss. Uh, wasn't in the top when it came to uh, just the tackle statistic. Uh, but the tackles for loss, like I said, 10. Uh, pretty Pretty good there. Uh, Cameron Jordan, you take a look at, look at our sacks. Cameron Jordan had 27 sacks. I do want to show you the lead league in sacks. So we have Von Miller with 42 and a half. And then Cam Jordan, one, two, three, four, five, six. He's sixth in the league. So hopefully that helps him and doesn't um, helps him maintain at least some of his ability and he doesn't get uh, regress too hard by Madden. He doesn't get um, pretty much screwed by Madden, or I don't get screwed by Madden by having Cameron Jordan take a huge hit going forward. Uh, you take a look at interceptions. Marshawn Lattimore had 11, and then we had Chauncey Gardner-Johnson with 7, uh, Marcus Williams, and Eli Apple. Uh, it's crazy. Eli Apple, Eli, Eli Apple only had 3 interceptions. And he got that dev story. Marshawn Lattimore did not get that X Factor dev story, but had 11. Uh, and I believe he took like two. He took only one to the house. I thought he took a couple, but that might have been last season. He took one to the house. Uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson, a surprise, he didn't get a dev story. Seven interceptions, and he took two to the house. Uh, Marcus Williams also had one that he took to the house, as well as Eli Apple and Eric Weddle. Um, Pretty good, <laughs> pretty good performance from the defensive backfield, if you ask me. Uh, not a lot of interceptions from the user linebacker, but you take a look at my defensive uh, AI-controlled backfield. They're performing really well. Uh, moving forward, that's going to be a huge strength of the team. Uh, I am going to have to build around that. I think uh, that's going to be a focal point. Uh, Marshawn... Uh, Marcus Davenport is somebody that's supposed to um, complement that game, uh, that defensive backfield with that pass rush, as well as Cameron Jordan. Uh, and as you can see, they covered a lot, a lot well, and Cameron Jordan's sacks went way up uh, compared to last season. I believe last season he only was in the teens when everybody else was, you know, 50 sacks, 40 sacks, as you just saw, 20-plus sacks. Um, past deflections, Eli Apple, maybe that's how he got his dev story. 12 de deflections leading the team. Uh, Marshawn Lattimore missed some time, though, and he was right behind him with 10. Uh, he missed about, I would say, about four or five games. So he missed a chunk of time. Uh, he has his games played here. Uh, Downs played 11 games. So he missed five games, and he still was two deflections and had... Eight more interceptions. So it's kind of crazy how he didn't get the dev story uh, for X Factor and Eli Apple did. Hopefully next season he he gets it though. That would be really good for the team. Um, but that's pretty much going to do it for the stats. We didn't really um, end up anywhere when it came to awards. Um, but going forward, uh, I am going to bring back the uh, team series. Um, I did the league report this past season. It was fun. But it's way too much um, to do week by week by week. Uh, it was pretty much taking up all my time. 
Uh, the uh, team series is a little less time. Uh, still the same benefit um, when it comes to the tribute request. So I am going to do this going forward. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, I'll when it comes to the off season and once the off season starts kicking off, I'll probably put out more videos. Um, not, I don't think I'm going to put it on, uh, one for next week. Maybe I'll put one out for the pro bowl. Uh, maybe the super bowl. Um, I really got to map it out going forward. Um, but that's pretty much going to do it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed. I hope you keep on watching. And if you enjoy the content, please like subscribe, comment, uh, tell your friends, post on Facebook, all that good stuff. Uh, my name's is nefarious. It's been a pleasure and I'm out of here.